Hello again everyone and I want to talk about why I am being hooked up on a tow hook. Okay, so we've all been here and uh, we've all had problems with our race cars, particularly if you are a masochist and drive little British sports cars from the 60s and 70s. So uh, I've had this reoccurring problem for the last three race weekends that has caused me to miss sessions and uh, it get me in this situation here. And so this is a short video. You can move ahead from my little opening dialogue here if you want to. I'm gonna show you how I fix a rear axle seal leak. And the reason this is important to fix uh, is to keep the fluid in the diff and keep the fluid off of your brakes and keep the fluid off of your rear tires because this is what happens to you if that happens. So after getting towed in or uh, coming out on my own power uh, several times, uh, I'm going to finally, hopefully, fix this thing by using a speedy sleeve. So the culprit is the driver's side uh, rear axle seal, which I'm showing you here, and the seal itself is fine. Uh, but it's this axle tube that's been a recurring problem for me. And you can see I've already got the speedy sleeve on there in this picture. And I'm gonna show you how to fix that now. So let's talk about speedy sleeves for just a minute. And for the sprites and MG midgets, uh, you need to be careful about which one you use. They come in various sizes. Obviously, you're gonna get one for the right diameter, which is one and three quarter inches. But this is the one I chose to use. It's number 99174 by SKF. And I chose it specifically because it has a seal seat width of about a half an inch. And uh, the, the two I have here on the table, one of them is three quarters and one of them is about a half inch. And I can tell you the three quarter inch one does not work. And what I'm talking about is that little dimension right there, B1 on the spec sheet. So if you're fixing one of these cars, go get that one, it'll work. You're gonna need a hammer and something to drive the seal on. That little tool that they give you with the, with the seal, with the speedy sleeve, is not gonna work. So I made myself a, uh, a driving tool. Uh, you can use a piece of pipe or whatever. I made myself a tool out of an old uh, socket and I, I kind of bored it out on the inside to make it big enough in diameter. Now we're gonna get through this pretty quickly here pull the hub off. I use double bearing hubs. Okay, so if you have a single bearing hub application, it's going to be similar, uh, but the hub, hub's going to look different. And here I am just sort of lining it up, and I'm going to show you why you have to have this driving tool that you're going to need to make or get a piece of pipe or something, because you need to go be able to go drive that speedy sleeve the full depth because the little driver they give you obviously is too shallow. There, see, it doesn't go on there. So, I'm going to put it on real quick, so you have a little video here, and you know, the thing's self-aligning. I didn't realize I had the thing on so crooked when I first lined it up here until I watched the video, but you'll see it'll self-align. Uh, for some reason, my view, I thought it was straight, but it'll self-align, so don't, don't uh, obviously, don't, you don't have to sweat that too much. And I just sort of start working it on. Uh, I've got my great Harbor Freight China uh, brass hammer here, which I've used a lot for lots of things. And I'm just going to drive it on. And it's really just this simple. Now you notice it has that uh, removable uh, band on the end of it. It's part of what helps you drive it on. That little uh, uh, swedged out piece on one end of it. And you see the direction I'm driving it on there. And that will fit really nicely up there. But uh, with this particular size, and you, it's, you're really close on the tolerance of, of where the, the, the seal is going to ride versus where the bearing's going to ride, so I pulled it off. And then, I, uh, fortunately, I didn't video that for you. I'm sorry about that. But it's real easy to do. They, in fact, they give you instructions. You just take a little cold chisel and you nip it a little bit, reach in there with a screwdriver, bend it up, take a pair of pliers, and peel it off. It's real easy. It took me about two and a half minutes to peel that thing off of there. So you see the, the new seating surface for the seal all nicely on there. 
And then uh, the rest of the video is just me putting uh, the hub back on. I use the same driver for that. I'm going to line this up now. I'm going to go slow here because I want you to pay attention. Uh, I, if this doesn't fit quite right, it means I didn't get the hub on. So in this case, I, I actually went back a couple times and hit it a few more times to make sure the hub was fully seated. Uh, and you want to be sure and do that because that speedy sleeve can interfere with you seating the hub uh, as far home as it needs to go. And so make sure you get that speedy sleeve on there right. I'm on the driver's side. So this is a left hand nut and uh, we're going to get it on there and then I'm going to speed things up and we're going to finish up the video here real quickly. And so we're just going to torque it down and then obviously what you do is you uh, drive over and you bend over the uh, lock washer. And so I'm doing that right now. I think I forgot a tap. And so I'm going to tap it down. And uh, that's about the end of the video. So, you know, if you have a recurring problem here, it could be because it's the, the axle tube is damaged. It could be because it's egg-shaped. It could be any number of reasons. If it just keeps recurring, put a speedy sleep on, and uh, that'll solve your problems. Hey, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. See you next time.